updating a room, you can play it safe by following the design rules, especially if you're not sure what to do. Or you can create a very unique space by coloring outside the lines. We show you which rules to follow, which rules to break, and still make your place look great on today's Soplo Home Project. Welcome to Soplo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra. Measure twice and cut once is a great rule to follow. I often get asked design direction on a variety of projects, and I find it makes it a whole lot easier when you have a helpful set of guidelines to follow. Today, we'll discuss the proper height to hang everything from your light fixtures, how to calculate the amount of tile needed for flooring or backsplash, and an easy way to create a room floor plan, and much more. I feel like when it comes to interior design and decorating your home, there's a lot of rules that it's said that we can't do. And one of them might be mixing patterns when it comes to our pillows and upholstery and everything else that's going on in the room. So I think that is one rule that we can break. And I'm going to show you one way that you can do that and how to do it. Most importantly, because this is a rule we're breaking, there still are going to be a few things to follow to make it work. And what that is. First of all, when you're going to mix your patterns, you want to identify the type of look that you're going with. So for example, florals can either be more tropical in this case and sometimes can also have a more feminine type of look in the decor. If you go with something like animal prints, it might be a little bit more eclectic and fun. And then of course, some like clean line geometrics are great for modern looks. So there are a ton of patterns. I'm gonna show you two great looks of mixing patterns and then give you a few tips on how to do it on your own in your own home. So rich textures definitely work well in a coastal look because you want natural materials and rope and anything that makes you feel like you're at sea. All right, so we have our nautical or even coastal look. So I want to point out a couple of things that I did mixing some of these patterns because I also bought in textures, which definitely is an important point when you are breaking the design rules and mixing lots of patterns. So here I did a very fine stripe, and of course this has pattern on pattern, so you've got a fine stripe background with an anchor pattern all over the front. I've got a textured striped pillow behind it, it's a wider stripe, and of course I offset it with some tone on tone textured pattern pillows. That definitely ties it in. And then on this side, of course, I also bought in a little bit of rope and a slightly wider stripe. Uh, another rule of thumb to think about is that when you are mixing your patterns, scale is really important. So I'm doing a uh, smaller scale stripe here, then I've got a larger scale here, and then another smaller. So one way to think of it is a large print or pattern, and then two smaller is great. And then also sometimes one large, one medium print, one smaller. Okay, so we did a nautical setup, and now I thought it'd be fun to do something a little more tropical since we are in South Florida. And of course, I feel like tropical decor has definitely been trending, whether it be in textiles, wall covering. So I got some tropical pillows and a few fun colors to show you. Okay, so here is our tropical look. And a couple of quick pointers, just if you're thinking about mixing your patterns up, mixing the textures. Here I used a couple of accessories to also ground some of the colors. So I introduced a little bit of the pink and the yellow in that print. So I bought it out here with some tabletop decor. Everything here is really saturated, it's really bold, it's really vibrant hues. So when you keep that all the same, it all works. If I threw a pastel pink in here, it wouldn't work as well. So you wanna keep the colors all in the same hue and saturation. Coming up on Soflo Home Project, when hanging decor items, scale and height go hand in hand. I'm Tacker Auto with FHIA, and just like a lot of you, I recently had a horrible experience with a contractor. We're going to learn about my experience on today's Sofla Home Project. Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we're continuing our Break the Rules or Follow Them episode of Soflo Home Project. So before the break, I showed you how to mix patterns while 
breaking the typical design rules. And now I'm going to show you where the rules do apply, and that is when it, everything involves measuring. So what I believe is everyone should have a 25 or 30 foot tape measure. This is a great size because in larger rooms, you'll have enough tape to get the full length of the room and you wanna make sure it's a sturdy tape measure and that it locks in place. So 25 or 30 foot, they often make 15 foot, 16 foot, stuff like that, which typically might be fine for perhaps going furniture shopping or whatnot, but a big sturdy tape measure. So a couple of other things to keep in mind, what happens with tape measures, if you pull it too far, it does not snap back in easy. So that last foot or so, just kind of err on the side of caution and don't overextend it because otherwise you are never gonna get the tape back in there. <laughs> so just a quick tip. All right, the last one that you could use and should use if you have high ceilings or if you quickly wanna measure your house to figure out your square footage or flooring to replace tile or wood, a laser, measuring device. You just have to level this on the flattest surface. And so if I was trying to get the height of from the top of here to the ceiling, you're just gonna turn that on, look to where the beam is going, and it will read off the measurement. When you have those super high ceilings, you're gonna want this because realistically, it's hard to put a tape measure up 14, 15 feet and still read what it says, right? So this makes life so much easier and usually they'll have a piece on the back like this so you can get from the corner of a wall to the back. So this just goes flush on a 90 degree angle. So we've established the kind of tape measure you need, but what about changing out your light fixture? How are you gonna figure out the height it should be over the table? As a designer, that is one of the biggest questions that I get asked. So if you are hanging a light fixture over your dining table, a good range of height from the top of the table to the bottom of the fixture is typically anywhere from 30 to 36 inches. So here we are just about at 36, okay? So this is exactly the height you should be. And keep in mind when you are hanging these fixtures over the table, you don't want the light in your line of sight, right? When you're dining, it should clear everything. If you have a tall family, you might go a little bit higher because when you're standing, you don't necessarily want this in your face when the light is on. So you kind of have to gauge it based on that and the type of fixture that you have. Some fixtures look better a little lower or a little higher. Another thing that I think is a question and a rule that we should follow is what size fixture do you choose? for a certain room or over the dining table. One way is to measure the length and width of the room in feet. So say this was a 10 by 14 foot room. I'm at 24 feet and that is the inches of the estimated width of the fixture. And you know what, right here, it's just about 24 inches. So measuring is so important when it comes to getting that right height for your light fixture, especially in the dining room. And someone who knows a lot about measuring when it comes to windows and doors is Tak Granada from FHAA. Let's see what he has for us today. Add me to the list now of people that have had a bad experience, a horrible experience, and it's something that I would never think it would happen to me. The generator company went out of business on us in the middle of the process and took our down payment, and I put my confidence in the wrong company's hands, and now I feel like a lot of folks out there uh, where to go and what we should do. We wanted to get a generator for our house, so didn't think anything of it. My wife and I didn't want a lot of different contractors coming into the house exposing me and our family to a potential virus. So it was referred to by a worker of ours that's been a friend of mine for several years. So I said, just have him come out and we'll get it taken care of. The gentleman came out, didn't do any research on the company, just gave a down payment to get this generator done. And we got everything prepared for the generator to come in. We uh, went into a contract with the gas company to prepare all the lines for the house and, and spent a lot of money to get it all ran to the uh, right side of the house for the generator to be there. And the gas company tore up the yard, um, did everything that they could do, and they were just waiting on the generator company to close out the permit and get everything completed. And the generator company went out of business on us in the middle of the process and took our down payment and we don't have anything completed. So we're left with a torn up yard, an open permit, and no generator, out money. So it's no different now than it has been in 
before. We were always going to hear from friends and family that they have a contractor that they would recommend to us. But now more than ever, make sure you do your own homework and make sure you're going with a contractor that is reliable and financially stable to overcome some of the variables and the things that we can't control that are happening right now so that you are better protected in doing your home improvement project. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Tat. Okay, you guys, so we've looked at dining room fixture heights, and I think that might be one of the most commonly asked questions when we're thinking about hanging a light fixture in our home. But I would say the second one is the kitchen island or peninsula in this case. So the same principles pretty much apply, but you have to think about your surface height. So on this, I would always measure from the top of the counter to the bottom of the fixture you're hanging. We have 36 here. You're six inches higher on a kitchen counter than you are on a dining table. So if you wanted to hang them at 30, also okay, because it's gonna put you in that similar height. 30 inches to 36 inches is really kind of the sweet spot when you're hanging light fixtures over your kitchen island or peninsula. Two other things to quickly think about. These here have a cable. So with that, you can make it 35 inches, you can make it 36 inches, 34, whatever you like. Some light fixtures have what's called fixed down rods. The fixed down rods are in set sizes and that varies by manufacturer. Usually you'll have a 12 inch rod, a six inch rod, another 12. When you have a super high ceiling, it doesn't always work because it won't bring the fixture down low enough. And again, user specific. You've got a tall family and you need it a little bit higher, just add that height. Coming up next, find out how to calculate the amount of tile needed for any project. Juan with Ace Restoration Services. Today we're in a client's home who had suffered water damage in her bathroom. And she had called us initially because there was a drip that was occurring in her bathtub which later caused a mold to grow. So we're getting ready to speak to the homeowner and she's gonna tell you how we helped her solve her problem. I called Ace Restoration Services because I had a drip on my bathroom and I didn't know what to do and I, I needed to get it uh, fixed and I called you. After I called, James Garcia showed up at my house and did an inspection and told me what needed to be done. Uh, the inspection was a free inspection. I didn't have to pay anything for it. He told me that he, there was a lot of hidden damage behind my bathroom wall after he did the inspection with his equipment. I was very much surprised because I would have never thought that I had so much hidden damage be behind my wall. Very much concerned because I'm allergic to mold and my husband had a cancer and he was recuperating and I was very much concerned for his health and my health as well. So initially the water intrusion was caused by these pipes right here and of course uh, the water starts dripping, but these, uh, the drywall here acts like a sponge. And then what happens is the, the drywall absorbs the moisture and you can see how it starts debonding the tile here. Once we completed the remediation, you can see where all the studs are painted white. This is not just a regular paint. This is an encapsulant that we put to kind of protect the wood from further uh, mold damage. And of course, you can see here where we capped off the, the pipes that were affected. So at the end of our remediation, our main goal is to pass the PRV. PRV is post remediation verification. So in other words, when we're done with the remediation, we have to call the industrial hygienist, the mold assessor, to come out here again and do a mold assessment. And once we pass the PRV, they give us a certificate and kind of ensures that the impacted areas are no longer affected with mold, which of course then we can do the reconstruction and the homeowner can be brought home and, and, and put their uh, bathroom to pre-loss condition. I'm very happy with the process of my claim. Everything is being taken care of by ACE and I didn't have to do anything because I work very hard and I don't have time to do all those things. I'm very surprised and pleased at the same time. So it's very important when you have a loss in your home that you give ACE Restoration Services a call first. It's important to call us before you call the insurance company. A lot of times there's stuff that is said to the insurance company that they will use against you and it's important that we come and we document the facts. That way they don't give you any resistance when it's time to bring your home to pre-loss condition. ACE Restoration Services, let us manage your damage. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing our day talking about 
following and breaking the design rules and one of the design rules to follow definitely is measuring. So I thought, let's talk about measuring the room to figure out square footage. Redoing the floors, whether it's wood or tile, I think it's great to always calculate and know what you need when you go shopping. It makes it much easier to set your budget earlier on in the project. So if you're trying to figure out square footage for say the entire first floor or your entire condo, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go room by room and you break it out into almost shapes. So you would draw out your dining room, your hallway would be a rectangle. I'm gonna get the length, I'm gonna get the width of this space. And in inches, the best formula for that is length times width in inches and divide it by 144. That gives you your square footage. Or if you wanna do it simpler, you do it in feet. So say the room is 10 feet by 10 feet, that's 100 square feet, there's no division needed, you're just multiplying. So this way, this chunk of flooring, I know the square footage. Then I will move on to the hallway that's after this, measure out that length times width. So you wanna break it out by whole shapes, squares or rectangles throughout the space and then you add them all up. And now when you are calculating your square footage, whether if it's for tile or flooring, you always want to add a little bit of waste if you're buying your own materials. So you'll add 10 to 15% waste based on the pattern. That gives your installer plenty of room for cuts to make sure you have enough tile or wood product. So now that we've established how to do square footage calculations for your flooring, another common area where we need to calculate square footage is to price a new backsplash tile. And again, that's gonna be the same principle, just really simple. You're gonna measure the height of your backsplash times the width. I always find it's easier to break it out by sections and in shapes. This way you get the most accurate square footage calculation. Next on SoFlow Home Projects, learn how to properly plan the layout of any room. Welcome back to Soplo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing our day where we're learning which design rules to break and which ones to follow. And when it comes to measurements, that is where you need to follow the rules. Because if you don't have the right measurements, furniture's not gonna fit, things aren't gonna work out in the room. So having the right measurements is the most important thing. Prior to the break, we learned how to measure the space and now I'm gonna show you how to do a simple floor plan. Typically, I might do a smaller size, but for camera purposes, we're going large. So you'll use a regular eight by 11 sheet of paper. You're also gonna need is some sort of ruler. I'm gonna be using a marker, but it is best to do this in pencil because there might be a few things you need to erase. So I would say start in pencil, but again, working in marker just so it's darker for TV purposes. So I've got all of the supplies ready, but I can't do this without the measurements. We just learned to measure properly. So now here, I've got my rough measurements. And of course, when you measure rough, you're not always putting it into scale. So in this case, what we're gonna do is a small bathroom, a five foot by eight foot bathroom. Simple rule of thumb, we're working at one inch scale here. Of course, designers and architects work at much smaller scales most of the time, but to make it a little easier, four boxes equals one foot. What the most important thing is here, it's not about creating works of art. You don't have to be a designer or architect to do your very own basic floor plan to figure out a layout of your room or a basic remodel uh, floor plan. And so with the shell of the room and you plug in your measurements, now you have a blank floor plan that you can copy and play around with the layout. When I measure rooms as a designer, it's important to note outlets and switches, and if it's a bathroom or kitchen, any plumbing or appliance location. This way you know if there's anything pertinent that you need to Keep in mind, like if an outlet's close by where you're placing a desk. So I usually use maybe red for my electrical outlets and switches and blue for my plumbing center lines. And what a center line is, is where the center of the fixture connects. So here you have it, a basic floor plan that again, when you work on smaller paper, you can make some copies, you could try out different designs. So having a plan or some drawings makes it a little bit easier to do those DIY projects when you're out shopping for furniture or even your fixtures. And now let's see what Hunter Frankie from SoFlo Health has for us tomorrow. Hunter, what is going on? Hey Elena, oh, hold on a second. Hey Elena, this week on SoFlo Health, 
we are taking care of your health inside of your car as well as your car's health. And Morgan has a shoulder workout for you you can do pretty much anywhere as long as you have some dumbbells. And Martirano's has a delicious linguine recipe you won't want to miss. It's all tomorrow right here on Local 10, 1230 for SoFlo Health. Thank you, Hunter. We'll definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed today's breaking the design rules and following them and got some great inspiration and ideas for your own home projects. And we'll see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project, only on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like home. SoFlo Home. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You could also submit your own design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we discuss the benefits of reupholstering your furniture, as it's one of the best ways to update your home decor.